What is up guys? It's your boy Sword Swinger Cacus, and today we are going to be discussing which swords are the best to utilize against Crota, the final boss of the new reprised Crota's End Raid just added into Destiny 2 within Season of the Witch. Overall, guys, you can pretty definitively get a one-phase kill on Crota utilizing swords. And I did do a separate video talking about the best ways to get those one-phase kills and a lot of other tactics that you want to be utilizing aside from just swinging your sword. However, there has been a lot of debate over which swords are actually the best. Is it the Lament? Is it actually the Bequest, the Gold Tusk, all of that stuff? Well, that's what this video is going to attempt to find out. Now, now, a few very important things about our testing. Don't skip this part because then the numbers won't make much sense. So, when we went against Crota, what we simply did was we had a debuffer, we kind of had a Lament guy as a baseline to compare to, and then everyone else was using different swords and we would all compare damage numbers after. And then, once we got the damage numbers, we'd do it again. And again. And probably a fourth time, because the thing is, Crota is consistently inconsistent. He will move around during the damage phase. He will seemingly teleport behind you like a darn anime villain, you know, nothing personal kid style. So it can be very difficult to land consistent sword heavy attacks on Crota when he's doing that. Sometimes it seems like you can't miss and other times it seems like you can't hit one. So again, we would test and then a test again and again to ensure that we got some pretty consistent numbers and started to realize some patterns that would emerge. Now, additionally, our numbers are going to seem a bit low because we are not using surges. We're not using the Lucian mod, right? We want to have just the swords being the brunt of the damage. So when you see me say 3 million damage and you're going, oh, I've done more than 3 million damage on Crota. Yeah, because you had surges and you probably smacked him with a gathering storm super too, right? So that's what we're excluding. We're just giving that raw sword damage and trying to keep it as even as possible. Now with all that out of the way, what I'm gonna do is because we just killed him so many times, instead of presenting all the different damage phases, I'm just gonna give you like the straight up results. We're gonna group these swords into bad, we're going to group them into average, and then we're going to group them into good, and good kind of being like better than Lament. Lament overall did about 3 million damage consistently. Now it could do a bit more, it could do a bit less, but that 3 million damage was pretty common. We'd hit around there, or the Lament guy would hit around there quite often. Uh, keep in mind, you may be wondering, oh, what about the sword bearers? Aren't they going to do a little bit of extra damage against Crota? We'd have the Lament guy be a sword bearer, and we would have the debuffer guy be a sword bearer. So, yeah, Lament is kind of influenced a bit by breaking the overshield, but if you can't beat Lament plus a little bit of overshield damage, is the sword really that much better than Lament? You know what I'm saying? Anyways, let's get into the bad. Here are the swords that underperformed relative to that 3 million damage lament mark. First of all, the Heart Shadow. It seems like a cool sword, right? Uh, from the Duality Dungeon, it can w cause a weaken effect, it makes you invisible, it gives you bonus damage when you step out of invisibility, but the damage just wasn't there and overall it did around 2 million damage. Now, another underperforming sword is the Sola Scar, and you could say basically any caster frame. We had to test one, especially this Adept one, because as you can see, you can put on Adept Impact. So 10 more impact, is this actually the cheat code? No, it did pretty terrible, honestly with just over 1,700,000 damage. Now, moving on from there, we have the average performers. This is where you're coming in reach of the Lament, but you're often not beating it. So first of all, we actually had the uh, Nasruddin. So this is interesting because, well, we have a great role here with Relentless plus Whirlwind, but the origin trait field tested actually says, swords gain increased charge rate and guard resistance. Wait a minute, increased charge rate means that you should be able to do your heavy attack more often. So what was the Nasruddin able to do? Well, the highest number it was able to achieve was just over 2,800,000 damage. So respectable, but again, not over that 3 million lament mark to, in my opinion, make it like a good sword to use. Still an interesting one, but yeah, the field tested uh, origin trait wasn't that impactful. Now. 
honestly, another one in this average category. This may ruffle some feathers, but Vortex Frame Swords. They just weren't able to consistently overperform compared to that 3 million damage number. And the best one we used, the one that outputted the most damage in our tests, was actually the Death's Razor. This is craftable. It is Warlock only. It's a Vortex Frame, but importantly, it can actually get a Relentless Strikes plus Surrounded. So here's an important thing about Surrounded. Turns out Surrounded for this encounter for Crota is actually very, very good. And what you actually have to do is DPS him uh, around here on the bridge where enemies are roaming around below and Surrounded is going to be active for the entire damage phase. So unlike Rowan Blade that has to ramp up in damage, Surrounded is should be active from the very first swing and enhanced surrounded because it's craftable is going to make that even better. So the highest damage we were able to achieve with this during our testing was just over 2,800,000 damage yet again. And like I said earlier, this is certainly not bad. If someone is using this during the damage phase, they're not going to throw or anything like that. It's very close to Lament, but again, we weren't able to consistently beat Lament. So I'm putting it here in this average category. But moving on from there, we have the good swords. These are all weapons that were able to outperform the Lament and consistently do more than that 3 million damage mark. This is actually going to be the biggest category because obviously we're testing the best swords in the game with the best potential or most interesting roles. We're not going to test a sword in a bad archetype that like can't get any good perks, right? So with this category, the first one here is the one that you're probably seeing most in the background gameplay, the one I was using during a lot of the testing, and that is the Crown Splitter slash the Throne Cleaver. So I actually started with the OG Crown Splitter. This is not craftable, but it can get the role of Relentless plus Whirlwind. This is a Titan exclusive weapon. It's in a unique aggressive frame archetype. And that means, as you can see, when I heavy attack, I slam the ground, but I do a lot of damage. 250,000 damage slams consistently. And with this weapon, the highest damage number I was able to achieve was over 3,600,000 damage. And again, consistently, it came in over 3 million damage every single test. So very, very good weapon, but not really obtainable anymore. So I actually went and crafted the Throne Cleaver, which is the new version added very recently in Season of Defiance. This can't get relentless in the first column in fact, the first column perks are terrible, unfortunately, but thankfully it can get enhanced surrounded as you can see in the second column. And then, you know, I put tireless blade, but put whatever you want in that first column, guys. Obviously you're going for, you know, something like a honed or jagged edge. You want to increase the sword damage on these things. But once I crafted that, we tested it and it was able to achieve well over 3,200,000 damage. Now, yes, this is quite a bit less, and the main reason was because of lack of ammo. Without Relentless Strikes, you are kind of running out near the end of the damage phase. However, a lot of this was because I was encountering a glitch, as you can see, where I would rally with a different reserves chest piece and switch back, and then my ammo would just randomly disappear for no reason. I never had that occur on the other swords. It was just uh, this aggressive archetype so if that wasn't happening I'm sure I could do a lot more damage uh, with this weapon again you're consistently doing over 3 million damage so whether you have the OG version or the new crafted version it's still a very good weapon that can and often does outperform the lament now moving on from there the next sword that is categorized in the good category is going to be the gold tusk now, yet again, this is a craftable weapon from Season of Defiance. This is the Hunter exclusive sword. It can get the fantastic god roll of Relentless Strikes plus Rowan Blade, and you can enhance both of those perks. But importantly, it can get the Viced Stinger Origin trait. And that says specifically, swords receive faster charge rate while this perk is active. So you can heavy attack a lot more often. And this is in the very unique lightweight frame archetype. 
So with this weapon, the highest damage number we were able to achieve was well over 3,600,000 damage. And again, it was very consistent coming in at 3,400,000, 3,500,000 in the other tests. So consistently outperforming the Lament. But moving on, the last weapon in the good category is the Bequest. Now this is a craftable weapon from the Deepstone Crypt Raid, and its claim to fame is that it's an adaptive frame archetype, but it just has 10 more impact than other adaptive frames. Like, for whatever reason, Bungie just made the sword do more damage than other weapons in its archetype, and it can get the fantastic role of Relentless Strikes, plus, of course, enhanced surrounded. So you will need to use it on the bridge, all that stuff. And the most we were able to achieve in terms of damage with this weapon was 4,100,000 damage, almost 4,200,000 damage. It was the only weapon of the entire day that broke the 4 million damage mark. And so going purely on the highest damage numbers that were able to be achieved, the bequest is the overall winner. However, I think there's a different takeaway here because as you can see right here, during the very final damage phase, we're kind of wrapping up testing, so we decided to finally throw on those surge mods and just bake Crota and get some spoils and get this over with, right? And as you can see, I was actually using the crown splitter, the OG crown splitter, because that's what I ended up feeling the most comfortable with. And as you can see, I did the second most damage. The only person who beat me, Azorki, was using Gathering Storms, right? And I beat Elite, the bequest guy. Uh, so wait, what's going on there? And what's going on there was Elite had a bunch of excuses. He fell off the edge. I don't know. He said something. I can't remember what it was. But importantly, all of these different swords, right? The gold tusk, the Crown Splitter, the Bequest, they're all in different archetypes actually. So they're gonna have different heavy attacks and some you might just be more comfortable using than others. I know for me, like the Lament, I'm a certified trash tier Lament user. For some reason, the Lament, whenever I use it, I lunge past the enemies on the heavy attack. I don't know why. I'm sure some of you watching are in the same boat where you're like, yeah, I just can't get the Lament down. But with the Crown Splitter, I am slamming those heavy attacks every single time and I'm hitting them consistently. So I would say that I don't think there's one definitive answer because the bequest does have like that lunge heavy attack and you can hit him, but oh boy, can you miss with it as well. There is an argument to try all these swords out and use what you feel most comfortable with. Use the one that you can consistently land those heavy attacks most often. And for a lot of people, the answer is going to be the bequest. And there is also an argument to not even doing a heavy attack or doing it very sparingly only when Crota is kneeling so you for sure hit him stuff like that, right? Um, and just light attack for consistency's sake. But overall, again, all of the weapons in the good category have the potential to outperform Lament, which is awesome because it frees up your exotic slot. Throw on the Merciless if you run out of sword ammo to do a ton of damage, or the Conditional Finality and throw on a Holster mod to yeet out some of those rounds every once in a while, right? Or heck, you can even use the Risk Runner God knows every single enemy in this encounter is shooting out arc damage, so that's going to make you basically invincible. So the fact that all of those different swords, the Gold Tusk, the Crown Splitter slash Throne Cleaver, and the Bequest are all potentially outperforming Lament means that you have a lot more variety in your builds, and all of those are worth looking at. Again, although the Bequest did output the highest damage number in our test, use whatever you're most comfortable with. Guys, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.